The Earth may be assumed to be an isolated uniform sphere with a mass of 6 times 10, 24 kg at the centre. Satellite is in a circular orbit around the Earth in the Earth's gravitational field. The period of orbit is 94 minutes. Define gravitational field strength. Oops. Gravitational field strength is the one that we use a symbol G. It's also the same G in the one we use F equals to mg. So if you want to define G, just rearrange. Force per unit mass. Good idea to say force per unit. So we gotta say this is the force per unit mass. Okay, this one. Note that this is uh, not the same as the definition of gravitational field. So if I cancel this out, define gravitational field is a different definition. Gravitational field strength is this definition. So make sure you sort them out when you're doing revision. Okay, calculate the radius of orbit of the satellite. If they never give us a diagram, what, what can I say? We got to draw our own diagram. So we have a Earth, draw Earth, pretty big mass and a nice circular satellite going around. Yeah, 1,200 kg. Okay, this is the small m. Uh. We got a big m here, small m there. Period orbit in 94 minutes to, to go one whole round and come back. Okay, uh, so when you see circular motion like this, first thing you want to do is ask yourself, who provides centripetal force? Who is pulling the, the, the satellite in a circle? Got to remember that, oh right, these masses, they attract each other. There's actually two forces, but I'm only drawing one. This is gravitational force. So we start with this. We answer the question and we say, gravitational force provides the centripetal force. It is equal to the centripetal force. There's only one force. Step two, you sub in the equations that you uh, know from these two. Hopefully you remember the equations. Huh? So this Fg is going to be Newton's law of gravitation, gmm over r squared. Fc though, there's two, two possible options. There is either mr omega square or mv square over r. You look at what information they give you. If it's time-based, 94 minutes up here. Time-based means you're probably going to use the one with omega, not the one with velocity. They didn't give velocity, they give time. Okay, so the time one is this one. So what are we trying to find again? Oh, radius, right? So let's do a bit of rearranging because why not? So R, okay, so this will be G, M and M cancel out. So this will be G, M over omega square equals to R cube. In other words, R cube, so R equals to cube root of G, M over omega square. Okay, let's plug in the values. So R here equals to cube root. G is a constant. Got to remember the constant G. It's in the first page of every data formula sheet. That's 6.67 times 10, negative 11. So I'm going to write that here. G. Mass of the... This M is which M? Ah? Big M is the one in the middle, okay? Small M is the object that is in orbit around the mass. So here we're going to write the mass of the Earth. 6.0 times 10, 24. Divided by... Mm, omega square. Okay, here we need to find out omega. What is omega square? Omega is a uh, old friend from oscillation. So omega, you need to remember, is 2 pi over t. t being the period of one complete cycle. Which we do know is 94 minutes. Okay, okay. So here we can say it is 2 pi over t. 94. But wait, we are not done yet. You need to convert minutes to SI unit. So 1 minute, 60 seconds, times 60. And don't forget, a lot of people forget the square. You write until so nice, but you forgot the square. Okay, so with this, you should get your 6.857 times 10 to the 6, or slightly different numbers, 
but you can round it off to 6.9 times 10 to the 6. So the first mark comes from you equating centripetal force and gravitational force. And that's this one over here. Who provides centripetal force? Gravitational force. Then the second mark is you come and you sub in all the correct values. Your constants, your date, your time, your omega. And lastly, of course, if everything goes well, calculator press correctly, then you get your final mark. Okay, let's move on. So rockets on the satellite are fired so that the satellite enters a different circular orbit that has a period of 150 minutes. Okay, so we have changed the T, new T. New T. The change in mass assumed to be negligible. You know why they say that? Because if you are firing rockets, you burn out some fuel, so you technically do become lighter. But never mind, and negligible, we don't care. Okay, so the radius of the new orbit is 9.4. Think to shortcut, I don't want to rewrite the whole working here. So F FG equals FC, yep, the same thing. Same thing, same thing. I'm just going to take this R here, this radius, and just plug the values inside this. Okay, so sure, let's go. So reusing the previous one, r equals to cube root of 6.67, mass of the earth. And here is 2 pi over, now it's 150 minutes, and then convert to seconds. Okay, so this one should give you your 9.364 times 10 to the 6. Don't panic if you don't get to, you didn't get to solve this part. You can actually take this value, because they asked you to show, man. they already give you the answer. Take that value and go on to the next part to solve. So here, they will give you one mark if you use the mass of the earth, 6 times 10 to the 4. And then if you plug everything, get the correct answer, show that your working is you know logical, no errors, then you get the last mark. Okay, state with a reason whether the gravitational potential energy of the satellite increases or decreases. Ooh, this one is uh, just a little tricky. How do we know if the GPE increase or decrease? Okay, let's check the radius. Radius is 9.4. What was the old radius? 6.9. So from 6.9, you become further away. Oh, okay. So I can, okay, give me a moment to draw the graph. We're looking at gravitational potential energy. Okay, so if I were to draw a graph of that. GPE looks something like this. So we start off at 6.9. Okay, let's call this radius times 10 to the... Six. I start off at six point nine somewhere here. Then I go until nine point four. So I, I I don't know somewhere here. <laughs> this diagram is not to scale. Okay. So I'm starting off at a quite negative GPE if you want to think of it that way. Then I go 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 further. I go to a higher GPE. So this actually is an increase in GPE. Because the whole idea of the GP here is negative. Okay, from lower to high. If you say, miss, this one I cannot bring. What is happening? Okay, then you, you think back to our ASR. Okay, you see, this is the floor. This is you standing on the floor. If there is a ball on the floor, I move it further away to the s higher in the sky. It's an increase in GPE. Because you're moving further away from the earth. Similar concept, if I if this is the Earth, your ball is the one ball is here. Then you move it further away, moving further away, right? So increase in GPE. So similar concept here on top, on Earth, and also in this new system of graphs and gravitational potential energy. So here we can say, look for what's the answer increases. Why you say because the orbit radius. Or you can say because 
the separation increases. So I'm looking for GPE increase. Why? Because of radius or separation increase. B1. Okay. Last part. Determine the, ooh, determine the, determine the, oops, oops, oops. Something funny is happening here. Okay, there we go. Determine the magnitude of change in the GPE of the satellite. So we, we kind of draw the graph already here. There's an increase in GPE when you are nearer versus when you go further away. We need to find what that, that, that value is. So for GPE, they didn't give us any other information. So we have to use our equation, which is that a GPE at any position with respect to infinity is GMM over R. Sometimes you may say, Miss, can we put negative side? Can negative is to just tell me that it's attractive mass, but it's not strict. If you don't write a negative sign, it's okay. So I just want to find the difference in magnitude. So I personally am going to ignore the negative. So I will have GMM over R, R2 minus GMM over R1. Final minus initial or something like that. If you want to put a negative sign, can you put negative GMM over R minus negative GMM over R. But a lot of negative, but you still get to the same conclusion. So no need lah. If you did negative, it's okay also. Just minus the difference. So I'm going to factorize this because it's a bit long. So I will do GMM 1 over R2 minus 1 over R1. So here will be 6.67 times 10, negative 11. Mass of Earth, 6 times 10, 24. Mass of the satellite, 1200. Radius, 1 over oh, the final one, 9.4 times 10 to the 6 minus 1 over 6.9 times 10 to the 6. There we go. So you may get a negative sign here also. That's okay. It's 1.51 times 10 to the 10. 1.851, yeah. So you can round off to about 1.9 here. Lah. As long as your value can round to 1.9, that's okay. If you wrote negative, no negative, doesn't matter. So here, one mark as usual is for final answer. It is zero. Ah. One mark is for your general equation of GMM over R. If I see this anywhere, that is okay. Second one is the last and final mark is if you substitute the, the subtraction of values correctly. Here I notice there is a there is some kind of error very common, especially at this step. Some people do GMM R2 minus R1. Is that... I, mm, I don't think that's quite quite correct. Can factorize like that, man? GMM over R2 minus R1. I don't think we combine fractions in that way. So this one, if you did this, something is very sus with the maths there. So keep in mind that this one, you cannot just combine the fractions down there. If it's on top, yes. But it's at the bottom, the, the, the denominator, I don't think you can do that. Okay, I think that's the end of this question. <coughs> We should revise a little bit how to do GPE. This one is a calculation question. So hope that was helpful, helping understand a little bit more. Uh, but that's all for this question. See you in the next one.